Although breathtakingly beautiful, Russia's Lake Karuki is probably the last place on earth you'd want to choose for a lakeside retreat. Just standing next to the picturesque shore for an hour would give you a radiation dose of 600 Rundgen, more than enough to kill you. At its height, the lake was putting out more than 200,000 times the normal amount of radioactivity, due to poor waste disposal practices. Nestled deep in Russia's Ural Mountains, close to the modern Kazakhstan border, Lake Kareke falls within the Mayak Production Association, one of the country's largest and leakiest nuclear facilities. Built in the 1940s, immediately after World War II, Mayak was one of Russia's most important nuclear weapons factories and was inaccessible to foreigners for 45 years. But when President Boris Yeltsin signed a decree in 1992 that opened up the area, visiting scientists who gained access immediately declared it the most polluted area on the planet. It seems that in its long period of obscurity, Mayak was the site of numerous nuclear-related accidents, some almost as devastating as the Chernobyl meltdown. Nuclear engineers at Mayak apparently dumped radioactive waste into the nearby Teka River quite regularly. The watered-down waste that they discarded rather carelessly was a mixture of radioactive elements such as strontium-90 and cesium-137, each with a half-life of approximately 30 years. For 10 years, their assumptions proved to be true, after which a severe drought struck Chelyabinsk. The lake slowly began to dry up, exposing the radioactive sediment at the bottom. The toxic dust spread everywhere peppering about 900 square miles of land with strontium and cesium, along with other unpleasant elements. As a result of all the contamination during the 1957 blast and the 1967 drought, large areas of Chelyabinsk remain uninhabitable to this day. Experts have estimated that approximately 1 billion gallons of groundwater have been contaminated with radioactive waste. And to this day, the local population remains blissfully unaware of the actual levels of radioisotopes in their potable water and home-grown food products.